Okay, so a lot of people will not be able to simplify this numeric expression because they're going to be confused primarily with this negative exponent. But uh, maybe you can do this problem, and the only rule here is no calculator. And the problem is negative 4 cubed divided by negative 4 in parentheses squared, all of this to the negative 2 power. Okay, so again, no calculators, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then of course I'm gonna solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades, and it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so we've got a lot of number crunching to do here and we have these fours. There's a lot of parts of this problem. Well, I don't wanna say a lot, but there is certainly more than one part of this problem that will confuse people. But let's go ahead and take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer is 1 over 16, and of course that is positive 1 16th. Now, if you got this right, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you could brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of powers and exponents. And uh, this is extremely important, not only in just uh, basic mathematics like this, because here we... Um, don't have any variables, but if you don't understand how to work with powers and exponents, you will not be successful in algebra. So let's go to get into this. Again, there's going to be a few parts of this problem that uh, will typically confuse a lot of people, but uh, if you stick with me for a few minutes, you will definitely understand exactly how uh, to get the right answer. So what we wanna do here first is figure out what negative four cubed and negative four in parentheses squared is equal to. So let's go to focus on this. Once we get the answer to this, then we'll talk about taking all of this answer to the negative two power. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at both expressions here. So we have negative four cubed and then negative four squared. Now, a lot of uh, people will confuse these two, all right? These two um, things mean uh, something different, all right? So matter of fact, before I even show you this work right here, let's just talk about negative four squared versus negative four squared written this way, okay? So negative four squared means negative four times negative four, all right? So this is what we have right here. Again, we are squaring this number which means that we're gonna take this number and multiply it by itself two times, right? So negative four times negative four. Of course, we have the answer there. Now, negative four squared means something entirely different. What this means is that we're going to take four squared and then we'll take the opposite of it or the negative of it. So this is gonna be the negative of, four, of the answer four times four. So this is gonna be negative 16. And again, this is an area that a lot of students confuse, easy to make a mistake. So if this is a little bit confusing for you, no problem, as long as you understand the difference here. So right here, negative four cubed means this is the opposite of four cubed, all right? So in other words, we're gonna, we have to find out what four cubed is equal to, and then we'll take the negative of it. So what we're gonna be doing right here is we take the negative uh, value of four times four times four. This, of course, is four cubed. So this uh, right here, uh, let's just look at the signs of these numbers. So this is positive four times positive four times positive four. This is a positive value, and we're gonna take the opposite of the positive value, which is gonna be negative, right? So this entire sign of the numerator is negative. Now, I'm not gonna do the math right now. You might be saying, well, let's go ahead and multiply four times four times four. Well, not so quick. That's not the smart way to do this problem. But let's just go ahead and focus in on the sign of the denominator. So negative four squared is negative four times negative four. This is going to be positive in terms of value because a negative times a negative is a positive and a negative times a positive is a negative. Now, if you uh, kind of forgot these basic positive and negative number, uh, number rules, I'll give you some suggestions on how you can relearn and improve in all these kind of skills. But right now what we have is that 
we're going to have a negative value in the numerator and a positive value in the denominator. So a negative divided by a positive, the entire value of all of this is going to be negative. So this is a good way to kind of look at this problem is to figure out the sign first because uh, we got these fours uh, going on here. And if we just know that the sign of this uh, um, expression, this fraction is going to be negative, well, this is going to help us do this much easier other than just kind of multiplying all these fours together. So what you don't want to do is take these fours and just say four times four times four, do all this number crunching, and then you've got four times four is 16. What we want to do is cross cancel like factors. So again, we already discussed that this right here is going to be uh, the negative value of four times four times four. And right here, negative four squared is going to be the positive value of four times four. So with that in mind, we could just kind of think of this problem this way, four times four times four over four times four. Now, yes, indeed, I can technically put a negative sign in here and have negative signs right here, but we already kind of know that we're dealing with these fours and we know what the ultimate signs um, of the numerator and denominator are going to be. Now, the reason why we want to think in these terms is because we could cross cancel a lot of these factors right here. So we have four times four times four. So instead of multiplying, we could just simply cross cancel this four with this four and this four with this four. Again, when you have like factors in the numerator and denominator, you, cross, you could cross cancel one factor for one factor. So this is simply going to leave us a four in the numerator. And again, remember the sign of the numerator is going to be negative. Uh, and the sign of the denominator is positive. So negative divided by positive is going to be negative four. So if this kind of confused some of you out there, so let's go ahead and just kind of do it this way just to uh, make sure that no one is kind of, uh, you know, too confused with what I'm doing here with these fours. So we know that this is this entire answer, negative four cubed is going to be negative times all of this. And negative four uh, squared is negative four times negative four, but we could factor out technically a negative one from the, the uh, four right here, this negative four. So we could think of it this way. So negative one times negative one is a positive one. So different ways you can look at it. Again, what we're trying to do this is uh, without a calculator and make our life as easy as possible. All right, so we're gonna be cross canceling here. This is gonna leave us a negative four. And so here you go. Uh, we need to uh, look at this expression as negative four cubed over negative uh, four parentheses squared as ultimately being equal to negative four. All right, so that means that our expression right here, all of this stuff is equal to negative four. And now the problem is, uh, is figuring out what negative four to the negative two power is. Okay, so before I get into this, Again, uh, the first part of this problem that can probably, uh, where a lot of people will make some errors is confusing these negative signs when you're taking power. So you gotta be very careful with that. So now let's go to take the next step and figure out what this part of the problem is. And as I indicated in the beginning of this video, a lot of people get confused with working with negative exponents. It's not that difficult. And I'm gonna show you this uh, exactly in one second. But first, I'm gonna show you this, which is an invitation to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wouldn't interrupt this lovely math video unless I need your support. I need your support. Although I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, I have well over 2,000 math videos from basic math to advanced math, like calculus and everything in between. I still need your support to keep this channel going. I love teaching mathematics, but uh, you know, for me personally, my goal is to reach as many people as possible uh, that can benefit from my math instruction. I have all these years and decades of teaching math. I wanna be able to connect with people that could benefit from my style of instruction. The only way I can do that is to get you to subscribe to that channel. And if you're gonna do that, you might as well go hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Thank you very much. Now let's get back to the problem. All right, so at this point, we need to figure out what negative four, all of this to the negative two power is equal to. And we're not gonna be able to uh, do this part of the problem unless we understand this rule of powers and exponents. So uh, typically uh, you learn this rule or these uh, rules of powers and exponents. This isn't the only one, but this is the rule for a negative exponent. Typically this is something that you will learn in a uh, algebra course. So if you never have uh, seen this before, well, let me go ahead and explain this to you, but this is what we need to understand 
uh, a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the positive n. We need to follow this rule because what we're going to do is transform a uh, power with a negative exponent, and we're going to uh, write it this way, 1 over a to the n. So what does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and actually apply the rule right now. Okay, so like anything in algebra, you know, when you have a formula or a rule, you have to pay attention to the pattern. Okay, so A is our base, okay? Let's just make sure we understand the parts of a power. So if I have A to the negative N, the base, okay, well, actually, let me do another example here, like 2 cubed. This little part of the power is the exponent, and this big number down here is called the base. The entire thing is a power. So 2 to the third power, 2 is the base, 3 is the exponent. So in this rule here, A is the base and negative N is the exponent. Okay. So what we're saying here is that when we have a power with a negative exponent, and this is what we have right here, uh, this is a power with a negative exponent, or actually, it, it, well, yes, a power, it's a base that we have with a negative exponent. So how can we resolve this? Well, in mathematics, we don't want to leave our answers with negative exponents. We want to fully simplify as much as possible. So what we're going to do here is rewrite this power with this negative exponent by doing the following. Okay, so we have a to the negative n. Well, we could put this whole power into the denominator. And when we do that, it's going to go from a negative exponent to a positive exponent. Okay, so let's just make sure you understand this right here. Let me get my little negative n back. So we have a to the negative n. If we put this into the denominator, put this one over a to the positive n, well, then we address that uh, uh, situation. Let me, let's go to take a look at a couple quick, uh, easy examples before I do this one. You can see I already did the work here. So if I have two to the negative uh, third power, if we follow this rule, I can write this as one over two to the positive third power. Okay, so this is what this rule means. There's other uh, uh, aspects of this rule that I'm not gonna get into right now because I don't wanna take up too much of your valuable time, but this is the primary way uh, you need to understand this rule. Okay, so we have, again, we have two to the negative third power. I can write this as one over two to the positive third power. So here, don't let this negative four confuse you. I have this base to this negative two right here. So I can write this entire thing as one over negative four to the positive two power. Okay, so if you understand this, then we can simplify one over negative um, uh, uh, one over parentheses negative four squared as equal to the following. Okay, so one over negative four squared is gonna be equal to, well, of course, we have one in the numerator and negative four squared is going to be what? Well, that's negative four times negative four, which of course is positive. So this is going to be a positive 16th, leading us to our final result, a positive one sixteenth. Okay, so hopefully, if you didn't get this uh, correct initially, you may be, um, you know, kind of seen where you went wrong a bit. But a lot of people, especially students in uh, out learning algebra, confuse the rules for positive, or I'm sorry, confuse the rules for powers and exponents. And you absolutely need to understand uh, powers and exponents to be successful in mathematics. So a couple of recommendations for uh, some of you out there that are actual maybe um, algebra students or math students. Uh, so I'm going to leave links to my main courses in the description below. So that would include pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra two, pre-calculus, geometry. Uh, for this particular uh, problem, I would suggest checking out like my algebra, uh, algebra one uh, course. I teach the same concepts in my uh, uh, pre-algebra course as well, but I get a little bit more into it in my algebra course. But uh, for some of you out there that uh, are looking at this I'm like, yeah, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm not taking any math anymore. That was years ago for me, but maybe you are still interested in learning math or maybe, uh, you know, recapturing all those math skills that you lost many years ago, or maybe you just weren't satisfied with your math education. You know, you look back, you know, on it and you're like, boy, I wish I had better math teachers. Well, I have the perfect course for you as well. It's called my Math Skills Rebuilder course. You'll find a link to it in the description. But uh, in that particular course, this is a new course that I just built. 
I teach you basic arithmetic, all that basic math that most people forgot. I teach you a ton of algebra to include the things that I'm talking about here, a ton of geometry, even some basic trigonometry and some basic probability and statistics. This is a self-paced course and uh, it will give you an outstanding, very strong, well-rounded math education that you can certainly build upon if you want to take more advanced math courses. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.